All right, hey guys, welcome back to the FBA Excel training course. In this video, we're gonna actually get into the three bid optimization algorithms and review a little bit more in detail what is going into the calculation. Uh, the simplest way to better understand each algorithm though is to just hover over the header and you can expand if there's more information here and read about each specific column. Uh, but going over one of my favorite ones, the waterfall bid algorithm, you will, to enable all those again, go back to the settings, uh, make sure in order to execute that bid optimization, you have the products selected under waterfall bidding. And then here you're viewing, we can actually view all of them for this video that might make more sense. Just click there and you can see I haven't actually assigned any of the defaults uh, outside of this one SKU for the iterative settings, but um, I'm just gonna go across from left to right and explain uh, what each of these are. So say I'm using, let's actually start with the um, waterfall bid method. Uh, so that's these orange headers here. Um, hovering over the target ACOS, as you can see, as you ex execute this bid optimization strategy, um, the algorithm is gonna work to make adjustments to hit essentially this target A cost over time. So it's not gonna be instantaneous, but as you do subsequent um, sequential bid optimizations, the more frequent, the better. Um, it's going to hone in your target uh, bids for each of the both converted targets and non-converting targets based on we've got an incremental increase feature as well as a set bid fix feature if you're not using the incremental. Working from left to right, so you've got a main calculation that's done for targets using the waterfall bid method that fall outside of a high ACOS threshold. So right now you can see I have the high ACOS threshold set at 30%. Essentially anything over 30%, uh, you're gonna do a calculation of, um, it's actually target ACOS over your current ACOS that that target's producing at uh, times your cost per click. So that's gonna be um, at this higher ACOS threshold, the basic calculation that's done, taking into account that target ACOS value, as well as the, you know, each target has their own current ACOS that it's running at, it has its own uh, cost per click that it's running at. So it's gonna kind of take all that into consideration, make a bid adjustment, and that's gonna be your new bid. Doing that over time will uh, systematically reduce your ACOS. The revenue per click times target ACOS bid algorithm is a little more simple and straightforward. There's not as many segments into the algorithm. It's essentially gonna look at each converted target um, and take your revenue per click for that target and multiply it by this target ACOS. So same type of deal it's going to, but it's gonna do that for every keyword regardless of the ACOS threshold. The reason I like the waterfall bid method a little bit better is a little more conservative. It's got some some more segmentation. You can see here the red uh, columns. You've got a high ACOS threshold, a mid ACOS threshold, uh, where it gives you a little more uh, flexibility and control. Where the revenue per click, it's just a uh, you know there's there's a few other inputs that go into the algorithm, but from a high level, it's just gonna be the revenue per click of each target times your target ACOS, which is this field. You've also got a low bid and max bid threshold where if that calculation goes above, obviously the max bid, it's going to set it to that fixed 25 cents. So if you really wanna scale and give a skew, for example, more room to grow, you're gonna to wanna to change that max bid threshold and set it a lot higher. So. Uh, fewer targets are being triggered by that max. Uh, maybe if you're in a niche that, uh, in my experience, is say your conversion rate on average is like 5%, that usually means that the aesthetics of the product come into play quite a bit and your average PPC conversion rate may be lower. In that case, you're, you may want to have a strategy that focuses more on product pages and rest of search as opposed to top of search and you'll be playing more of the lower bidding uh, strategies there to uh, scale and maybe you pick one or two keywords per 
skew to try to rank for on a systematic basis and run in top of search exact campaigns. In that case, you'll want to uh, maybe set a lower max bid. In my case, I actually run at like 25 cent max bids on a lot of my SKUs. And then I'll use the bid override table to target specific keywords that I want to run that are per converting well at the lower amount. And I want to bump those up and then monitor them and try to scale them up that way. So different strategies for different folks. And depending on uh, how your business is running, what products you have, it's going to it's gonna be different in, in some cases. But um, maybe you've got a consumable that runs really, really well and you pretty much kick ass across the board, have high conversion rates, um, you know, low COS, ACOS in general. In that case, you're gonna wanna let these, these inputs fly. You may jack all these up to $2 and let the optimizations take their course and you'll really see your campaign soar in that case um, and you'll be able to scale your revenue. Uh, but going across, giving a little more detail into the waterfall bid method. And again, this is the most conservative one if you really want to keep tabs on your ACOS. A uh, high ACOS threshold, so went over that briefly. That's going to be uh, anything above targets that have above that ACOS is going to be your target ACOS divided by your ACOS multiplied by the current cost per click. That's going to give you that first high ACOS kind of optimization, bid optimization step. And then you've also got a step that any ACOS for targets that fall between 20 and 30 in this case, so your mid ACOS to your high ACOS, you're actually not gonna have any adjustment at all. It's just gonna maintain at whatever that uh, current bid is. If your data turns out to be on the next sequence to where uh, for that target, your ACOS falls outside of that range, then it's going to trigger um, the calculation to start. So if you want to always have a bit optimization going, you would want to reduce that range there to essentially zero. So you'd want to change this mid to 30, and then you won't have a range there where you're actually not changing your bid. The, the nice thing about the waterfall bid method is anything that has an ACOS of above zero to that mid ACOS, so essentially like um, you know, 1% to 20%, let's say, it's gonna do another calculation um, where it's gonna take your current cost per click of all those, you know, that target you're looking at, and it's gonna increase it by a set percentage, in this case, like 10%. So it's gonna multiply your, um, your current cost per click times 1.1, and that's gonna be your new target. Um, and that's nice because it's really, you know, it may reduce your bid slightly um, if your current cost per click is performing well, and or it may increase it slightly depending on just how your current metrics are playing out. So it's real conservative and will regulate your ACOS even in um, good performing ACOS ranges and hopefully reduce some of your spend if it's not needed to achieve a current cost per click. I know a lot of confusing words and description in there, but I'm just trying to give a little more description on what's going on. Again, hover over these and read over what's going on, uh, but just know that um, you can really get segmented you know you can change these again on a skew by skew value and depending on how your metrics are looking as you do your optimization sequences you'll want to uh, maybe make some tweaks here and there as far as the click limits and impression limits you've got anything here we're talking about is for non-converted targets so anything that has over say 11 clicks in this case without a conversion we're going to automatically set that to this amount anything that has less than your impression limit so in this case 300 impressions and that's over keep in mind for these ratio calculations usually like a 30-day range so this really means you're not getting any conversions at all um, usually based on your bids not high enough or you're not relevant for that keyword but um, this is going to incrementally for this impression limit bounce your uh, bid up by this set increment usually you want to do a, like a one to five cent increment depending on which niche you're in supplements obviously something like that you'd want to be in a lot higher up bid so you're not taking forever to gather data but keep in mind if you are using this this is our, the y and z columns here are actually optional if you aren't using those you definitely have to have the zero conversion bid value set that will just set it to a fixed amount if you have unconverted targets if you are using this incremental increase based on impressions 
Keep in mind that if you have a max bid that's set low, say at 25%, if this keeps stepping up and your bid is, say, it wants to go to 26 cents, but you've got a max bid, this max bid is obviously going to take precedence. But that's in a nutshell the ratio bidding inputs. Obviously, if you're using the ad group level, same type of headers apply, so um, same inputs apply. The iterative bidding, on the other hand, is con considerably different. So this is based on a set rolling range, I like to explain it as. And in general, you'll want to pull a data range from your bulk sheet for a custom range, each optimization. You'll want to do it on a set frequency, usually uh, mean Elias, and, and I'll, I'll link a couple videos that go over this in more detail that he's explaining it, but he likes to do a rolling seven day range and negate the previous two days of data. So he'll go to customize, and if today's the ninth, we'll do ending on the seventh, and then we'll back up seven days. Um, so that would be what the first, actually it'd be the 30th, to the seventh, download that data, and then uh, all of the data then that gets used for the calculations is based on that range. So what you'll do is is incrementally increase by fixed amount. So it's not based on any ratio calculations. It's going to be a much more iterative process. He explains it in a way like when you're in the shower uh, trying to figure out the right temperature, you're, you're changing the dial to be a little bit colder. And when it gets too cold, you're making it a little bit hotter. So you can think of it like that on a rolling seven day range um, and looking at the data and making just small tweaks to each target uh, based on different ACOS thresholds. So the way these ACOS thresholds work is the first one is what's called a high ACOS threshold. Anything above that threshold, so in this case, any target that has an ACOS above 40%, we're gonna drop the bid by five cents on that specific snapshot in time optimization sequence. This seems like a small amount. So if you really want to control higher ACOSs, make this like 15 cents. So you can change these. This is just default, which works well in my niche. Obviously, if you're in supplements, this is going to be completely different. Mina actually sells in supplements. So he's got some general best practices, which are a little bit different than what I've got set up here. So you'll want to watch those videos and kind of get a grasp on how he's using this process. But essentially the process he covers in his video, these, these columns and inputs here automate that process to where you can turn it into a single click optimization. But after you've got the high ACOS threshold, you've also got a mid ACOS threshold where uh, if you hover over this, all targets between um, the ACOS is between the high ACOS and mid ACOS. So essentially right now between 30 and 40, um, you're going to be reduced by this amount. So this kind of stair steps it down and gives you a little more adjustment. Uh, Mina's, I don't think he uses this middle adjustment. Um, it just gives you a little more flexibility. You don't have to use it. You could set it to the same amount as the high ACOS and it just won't be used. Know that that's there. And then your target ACOS, all target bids with an ACOS greater than than zero and less than this or equal to this rather uh, should have equal to this target ACOS will be increased by this amount so one one cent each time and then you've also got a click limit for all target bids that have zero conversions and clicks greater than this value you you'll be reduced by the amount here so essentially if you've got any targets with greater than five clicks without a conversion it's going to drop the bid by five cents each time then impression limits same type of deal um, if it hasn't hit 150 impressions in that short seven day span, um, you're gonna up the bid by two cents and that's just to hopefully get some conversions on non-converting targets. So an iterative method versus a ratio based method, that's essentially the main difference. Here you're increasing your bids by small increment fixed amounts. Here you're increasing based on ratios with the revenue per click being kind of the middle ground as far as being conservative and then the waterfall being the most conservative. Uh, the testing that I've done, the iterative, really, if you want to scale and just go to the moon with your campaigns, it's a great way to do it. The revenue per click is kind of the middle of the road. It's going to be ratio based and it's going to pretty drastically change your bids target to target based on how your metrics are shaken out. Uh, the waterfall bidding being the most conservative and a little more easier to control. So that's kind of the main differences. Hopefully that gives you a little more information. Again, check out Mina's video. Um, Ad Badger's got some great videos on the revenue per click times target A cost. I'll link those as well. So you can just kind of get a grasp on what this system is kind of at its core automating. And uh, we'll uh, see you in the, in the next video. We're gonna be going over some more advanced features moving into, um, away from the bid optimization and into the keyword harvesting. So that's another core feature of Apex. See you guys on the next one, thanks.